This is Conrad Nagel inviting you to stay tuned for the next half hour for one of radio's outstanding dramatic productions on Proudly We Hail. Proudly We Hail. And now another Proudly We Hail one of radio's outstanding dramatic half-hours, transcribed coast-to-coast in cooperation with this station and presented by your Army and your Air Force. From Radio City, New York, here is your host and star on Proudly We Hail, the distinguished star of the theater, screen, radio, and television, Conrad Nagel. Thank you, Kenneth Banghart. Hello, everyone. Welcome again to Proudly We Hail. A story of men and airplanes, eh, Conrad? That's right, Ken, of men and airplanes. And a beautiful girl. It's a strange and a sinister story entitled In the Dead of the Night. We'll be ready for the first act after this very important message. Here's a word to the young women of America. Have you heard about the excellent opportunities for advancement in the expanding Women's Army Corps? Enterprising young women who can qualify are urged to enlist now. Every day, more young women are finding out the details about job openings in the Women's Army Corps. So visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station today. Have a talk with the recruiting sergeant. Get all the facts. He'll be glad to give them to you. Volunteer for the WAC today. And now with your star, Conrad Nagel, in the role of Gilbert Tucker, your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production In the Dead of Night. <laughs> The airport lay between two mountains, the first in a high, jagged chain. The land below and on the lower flanks of the mountains was jungle matted, and not the sort of place you'd expect to find an airport. But there it was, with its one dirt runway, its corrugated iron hangar, dilapidated office, and of course, its planes. There were two of them, both the same make and painted black. The airport was seven miles over a rough dirt road to the nearest town, and it was late afternoon of a hot, sultry day that the man named Gilbert Tucker completed this journey on foot and limped his way with determination, cane in hand, to the office porch. Well, what are you staring at? Where did you come from? Planet Jupiter. Do you mind if I sit down? Thank you. What do you want? Uh, <laughs> right now, I'd like to rest a minute. It's been a long afternoon and a hot one. Then I'd like a drink of water. Oh, can't I take your boots off? No, I'm particular about who takes my boots off. Is the head man of this country club around? He's busy. Good, that gives me more time to rest. Now, oh. what's a charming, clean-cut American girl like you doing in a fairy land like this? Who are you and what do you want? My name's Gilbert Tucker. I want to see the head man. Who are you? Mr. Groot isn't here. He won't be back until tomorrow. I thought you said he was busy. He is. Someplace else. Then what's his car doing out there? That's my car. Look, sweetheart, I've just had a long walk. As you can see, I'm not exactly built for walking. Even if I were, it would still have been a rough trip. Somehow it's affected my disposition. Now, if you'll just let me... Wish to see me? The door isn't very thick. Yeah, that's why I was talking so loud. My name's Tucker. I heard in town you were looking for a pilot. I'd like to apply for the job. Oh? Just where did you hear this? In a bar last night. There was a big red-headed guy talking to one of the local bells. Hmm. You are a pilot? Hmm. With about 25,000 hours behind me and log books to prove it. It seems just a little odd that a man with so much experience would come to a place like this. Does it? Well, one of my legs isn't my own. It's artificial. Very good substitute, but artificial. <laughs> Such a mellow tone. You can fly with that? Well, the airline I've been on for 12 years didn't think so. Neither have a lot of others from here to, well, from here to about everywhere. It's not that this thing interferes with my ability to fly. It's just that it gets in the way of regulations. And regulations are very important. How did you acquire this, this leg? Crack up? A 
drunken idiot didn't bother with a stop signal. Sixteen years of flying and never a scratch. I have to get mine while driving a car. This isn't airline flying here. Look, any kind of flying you can name, I've done. Don't worry, I know all about this operation. You do? Well, you don't think I'd walk all the way out here without finding out something about you. You fly equipment into the new mine up in the mountains. <laughs> uh, would you mind telling me how you learned that? Well, it seemed pretty common knowledge in town. Hmm. You see, Sally, I told you it'd be impossible to keep it quiet. Red. Red, Jose, Carlos, who knows? Well, what difference does it make? I won't tell anybody. Do you know what kind of a mine it is? The rumor was gold. But perhaps you can understand why we'd like it not to become common knowledge. No, oh, you own the mine, too? I have an interest in it. Well, I don't. Flying's the only thing I'm interested in. How or where or what doesn't make much difference. And pay? I'll leave that up to you. It's very difficult flying. If you got somebody to check me out, I'll prove I can handle it. Well, it's true. I'm looking for a pilot. I'm not concerned with regulations as long as the job is done. But there are a number of things I'd like to know about. Like what? Like how you came to be here in the first place. Suppose you step into my office. Get the job? Oh. Yeah, I didn't see you there in the dark. Thought you might like a ride back to town. Well, no, that, that's very kind of you. <laughs> I'm sorry I was so rude before. The heat, I guess. I wasn't too friendly myself. What about the job? Red has got to check me out tomorrow. Did you meet him? No, no, I only saw him in that bar last night. Why? He's a pretty rough customer. Like that ride? His nibs offered to take me in later, but... I'll tell him I'm going in with you. Thanks. Better than walking? Anything's better than walking these days. Must have been pretty hard to take. Your accident, I mean. <laughs> you might say it made a change in my life. But what about you? What brought you to this garden spot? Well, I like to travel and eat. And Mr. Groot offered me a job. Groot? Hey, what is he? I don't quite figure him. What do you mean? He looks far too polished and far too smart to be sitting in the middle of the jungle operating a one lung freight line. I think he also mentioned a gold mine. He said he had an interest. Well, that's right. He owns the mine. Oh. And he doesn't want anybody else horning in up in them thar mountains. Well, that's huh? a general idea. Well, greedy, I call it. You said you were only interested in flying. I'd, I'd stick to that. Do I detect a note of warning in that lovely voice? Well, let's just call it good advice. <laughs> well, I always listen to good advice. Say, one question. What happened to the guy I'm replacing? Well, I don't really know. He went out on a trip with Red, and Red came back alone. He said they'd had an argument, and Peters, that was his name, quit. Temperamental? Mm. Wait till you meet Red. Then maybe you'll understand. You wanted to see me, boss? This is Gil Tucker. He wants a crack at the job. His qualifications are good. I want you to check him out. Yeah. What's a cane for, bud? Sprain your ankle, pushing a rudder pedal? Mr. Tucker lost his leg in an automobile accident. What? You mean I got a fly with a peg leg? The name is Tucker. Uh, it'll be anything I want to make it, bub, and peg leg suits me fine. How did he find out about this deal, boss? He found out because of your big mouth. Yeah. He happened to overhear you talking to your charming Leela. I don't mind his finding out because he's as good a pilot as his record shows. It'll be to my benefit. But it just indicates what I've always felt about you. You talk too much. Aside from that, I'm getting sick and tired of your belligerent attitude. I lost Peters because of you. One more stupid move on your part and I'll be replacing you. Now, boys, don't get sore. You don't tell me what to do. Get rough with Mr. Tucker and you'll be on your way. Now, get out of here and go get the ship warmed up. Risking my neck with a... That'll do. Oh, a real sweetheart. Still want the job? What do you think? If you can satisfy him in the air, I'll take you on on probation. While I'm finding out about you. Oh, regular FBI investigation. I like to know all about my employees. I don't believe in taking unnecessary risks on anything. Hey, you're a hot pilot, huh, Peg Leg? 
Dragon. Well, hot enough to fly circles around you. That's so. Well, okay, you've got a forced landing on your hands. Now, wise guy, where are you going to put it? Just to make it sporting, let's not simulate it. Let's make it the real thing. Switch off. There. Now she's stone cold dead. Hey, are you nuts? There's no place to land down there. It says jungle. You should have thought of that before you gave me a forced landing. You crack me up and I'll really give you a forced landing. Take your hands off those controls. I'm flying this airplane. The only place to land's in the river. It's over there. I don't like getting my peg leg wet. Oh, where are you heading? Let me fly. I'll crack this thing up sure if you don't stop. What's the matter, Red? You nervous? Wait till I get you on the ground. If you're not careful, I won't come down at all. You can't land on the side of that mountain. Why not? Private property? But there's no place to land. You don't have very good vision, Red. Your nerves aren't so good either. Hey! Hey, no, you can't make it! Huh? Have confidence, Red. Easy there. A lovely flying machine. Hold tight now. This won't hurt much. Ah, there we are. Now you can relax, stout heart. Now, how do you expect to get out of here? Why, are you impatient to go? Listen, you, for two cents, I... I'll pay you one nickel to shut up. You wanted to see how I'd do on a force landing? Well, I showed you. Now I'll show you how to take off on a postage stamp on the side of a mountain. Only please stop distracting me with your rantings. Switch on. <laughs> He certainly must have upset him. <laughs> well, I taught him some fundamentals. So it sounds. You've got yourself a job. <sighs> it's been a long time since I've heard words as good as that. I hope you'll appreciate them. As long as you fly where you're told, we'll get along fine. You name it, I'll fly there. Good. I found most unpleasantness starts when someone begins meddling in affairs that don't concern them. Your only concern is to fly. Do I make myself clear? Perfectly. All right. I want you and Red to fly up to the mine. Get used to the territory. Conrad Nagel, starring in the role of Gilbert Tucker in the proudly we hail production In the Dead of Night, will return in just a moment for the second act. Any woman who knows the great things women have done in our nation's history knows that the Women's Army Corps' work deserves a high place on the list. It's a great corps and proud of an already fine record. The women of the WAC, Women's Army Corps, are again serving alongside the men of the United States Army, doing interesting jobs, challenging jobs, work of vital importance in the support of your Army's combat soldiers. They're busy in technical fields, secretarial posts, in supply, in the most interesting places in the world. If you are a young woman between 18 and 34 and qualify, you can find a career of deeply satisfying service in the Women's Army Corps. Because your United States Army and the Women's Army Corps are growing rapidly today, your chances for advancement are better than ever. Visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station. Learn all the facts today. You are listening to Proudly We Hail. And now, with your star, Conrad Nagel, in the role of Gilbert Tucker, we present the second act of In the Dead of Night. Why so quiet, Mr. Tucker? Sally, how long have you worked for Groot? Well, let's see. You've been here nearly a month. I'd say about five months altogether. Why? Um, how many other pilots has he had besides Red and Peters? None since I've been here. What kind of a guy was Peters? All right, kind of quiet. He drank too much. I think that's how he lost his job in the States. Was he, um, hired after you came or before? Before. Oh. Then he naturally replaced somebody. I guess he must have. The mine's been operating over a year. Why all the questions, Gil? Look, you met Groot and Cardenas after your brother died, and he offered you a job. Is that right? Well, I didn't see much point in going back to the States right away, so I took it. Now, would you please tell me what you're getting at? Well, just that things are not what they seem. No? In what way? Look, I flew a load of equipment into the mine yesterday, that crated stuff. You saw it. 
You've never been into the mine, have you? Mm -mm. No. Well, it's on a plateau above the jungle. Now, there's a dirt landing strip. The mine itself is about a half a mile away, or so I'm told. I haven't seen it. If I fly the equipment into the place, what's Red doing up there most of the time? Well, I imagine he must be bringing some of the gold out. Bringing it out? Has he ever brought any back here? No, I don't think so. But Groot probably has him fly it to some other place. Yeah, but what would be the point? What other key spot is there in this vicinity? What are you driving at, Gil? It smells, Sally, the whole setup. I don't believe there is a gold mine up there. I think it's all a blind for something else. A blind for something else? But, but what? Why should you think that? Well, a lot of things. Why have you got to have two planes and two pilots? Why can't the same plane that flies the equipment in bring out the gold? That's the way it's usually done. Why hasn't the area around the mine been cleared away? Why is it hidden? And why aren't I allowed to leave the landing strip and look around, huh? Mr. Groot just doesn't trust many people, that's all. He wants to keep all his gold for oh, himself. Oh, gold poppycock, Sally. Everything I fly into that mine is crated. It's always the same load, and it's always the same size crates. Hmm. Where do they come from? Do you know? No. All you know is you get here in the morning, and the load's on the plane with Carlos to watch over it. Hmm. Funny. What? What do you mean? Well, Peter said something once. Just before he left, I hadn't thought of it until you mentioned... Well, what, what did he say? Well, he, he had a snoot, Phil. He made some remark about gold in them thar hills, but not the kind you'd think. And then once I heard him mumbling. He might be a drunk, but he wasn't blind drunk. Look, Sally, I don't know what the answer to this is, but I think I know how I can find out. Now, look, <laughs> Monday, Wednesday, Friday, those are the days I fly on the crates of the so-called equipment. Huh? Those are the days Carlos flies with me. So I can't check what's in them in the air. This is Tuesday night. So? Suppose I sneak back to the airport and hide in my plane. Mm. It's possible I might have a guard outside, but certainly not inside. See, maybe I could have a look into one of those crates. Well, how can you do that without being seen? Carlos and Jose never leave the airport. Well, I can't watch every inch of it. And if they don't expect me, they won't be looking for me. Mm. Now, after we eat, you drive back within a half a mile of the place. I can hike it the rest of the way. Sounds spooky, Gil. I don't like it. I'll drive you back on one condition. What's that? That I come along, too. You might need help. What a way to spend the night. Suppose they don't ring the crates till daylight. Yeah, I'm sorry you're so cramped, Sally. I know it's not very comfortable on the floor of a cockpit. Oh, I shouldn't have let you come. You know, in a way, I hope that... Uh... Listen. There's a truck coming. He's not using any lights. Look. Look, there's Carlos coming out of the cabin. Oh. Jose's right behind him. I'm getting scared. Yeah, yeah, but don't let out a peep. Huh. He's going to back right up to the plane. Hey, since when have you got to load mining equipment in the dead of the night, huh? <laughs> Have they gone? No. Carlos is sitting there by the hangar. Mm. Jose has just gone back in the cabin. Now, now let's have a look in the crates. Mm. Quiet, quietly now. You can't pry one of these open without making an awful racket. Yeah, yeah, so I see. Look, Sally. What do you suppose these holes are for? I don't know, but look, there's a stamp here on the side. The name of the firm that makes the equipment, maybe? Oh, that could be a fake. Well, how are you going to find out without waking the dead? I don't know. Well, let's see how solid this stuff is. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be very... Sally. Hmm. Did you do that? Do what? Watch. Now, I'm going to knock on this crate. Now. Now, listen. Came from inside. Yeah, that's right. Now we know what the holes are for. Air. So whoever is in there can breathe. Oh, let's get out of here before I stop breathing. Now walk as quietly as you can. Yeah. We'll head across the field and hit the road down below. What does it mean? I'm not sure. But I think I know. Shh. Now, don't talk. How's your leg? I said don't talk. Carlos has ears like a cat. 
Look out. Kill. Go on. Go on, Sally. Run. Get out of here. Go on. Beat it. No good for both of us to get caught and get help. <laughs> What it did to the cat, Tucker? Peter's got curious, too, huh? Yes. Seems a strong trait in pirates. The fellow before him, I've forgotten his name. He was. Well, killed. it doesn't take long to realize this whole setup's a phony. It's my fault. My fault for not letting Red do all the flying. But it looked better with two planes and two pilots. More authentic. In the future, I'll take no more chances. Well, I suppose you have it all figured out. Shall I say no? It really makes no difference what you say. You'll have to go as the others did. I uh, have to, uh, shall we say, protect my gold mine. We know you're in the plane. The contents of the cargo verified it. Yeah. Must be quite a racket. What is your cargo? Undesirable aliens? Friends of friends who pay very well. It sounds better. Hmm. I fly them into the so-called mine, and Red takes them across the border at night. Is that it? Uh, that is accurate enough. <laughs> A real gold mine. Uh, you wouldn't trust me to go on flying and keep my mouth shut? No, too much of a risk. You appear to me as a man with scruples. Hmm. Love of country and all that sort of nonsense. First chance you got, you'd get word to the authorities. Could get very messy for me. Well, what happens now? I hate to be awakened in the middle of the night. And Carlos is an invaluable man. Yeah, I said, what happens now? <laughs> Always curious. <laughs> Red will be flying in at sunup. He'll take you back to the mine with the cargo. Tonight, when he flies it over, you'll go along. Only... I'm afraid you'll be getting off quite some time before he lands. <laughs> Regrettable, but necessary. How's it feel to be taking your last flight, Gimpy? Nice night. <laughs> yeah, a nice night for a walk about 10,000 feet down into the mountains. You stupid sap. What's the matter? The rope's hurt? Don't worry, it won't be long now. You got a field on the other side of the border? Nah, I'm gonna land on the side of a cloud. Got to feel it right out of this world. What's it to you? Got a cigarette? I got lots of them. But why waste one on you? I'll put this baby on the automatic pilot and see you to the door. Anything I can do to... To make you change your mind? Not a thing, Buster. You've had it. And Diego, he squealed like a pig. Peter's blubbered like a baby. What are you gonna do? Let's go. Up on your feet, Gimpy. No, I won't make it easy for you. Oh, you want a kick, huh? And with a tin leg. How's that feel? I don't mind dragging you. Suits me fine. There we are. Now pardon me while I get this door open. Nice night for a long drop. All set? Get your hands up. What the? I'll shoot if you move. Stay where you are. Look out, Sally. What happened? What happened? I... I kicked him. Oh. He went out the door. Oh. oh, Sally. Sally, now I know what an angel looks like. I didn't know what to do. I was afraid they might kill you right then. I hid, hid by the edge of the field, and when they took you to the office, I got this gun out of the hangar and climbed back into the plane. I've been there all day. I, I was going to come out when he when he flew you up to the mine, but I heard what he said about waiting until the night, so so I waited. Hey, I I owe you my life, Sally. Gil. 
Gil, I, I, I killed him. No, 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 Sally, you didn't do that. <gasps> See, all you did was save my neck. What are we going to do now? Well, I'm heading for Brownsville. We'll notify the authorities there. And we've got the proof with us. That'll take care of Groot and his boys. What'll happen to us, Gil? I don't know, Sally. But whatever it is, I... I want it to happen to both of us. Together. <laughs> Do you think I'll let you out of my sight again, you, you idiot? No, Sally. How about a kiss? <laughs> what about the airplane? Why, darling, didn't you know? That's what automatic pilots are made for. <laughs> Our star, Conrad Nagel, will return in just a moment with a word about next week's show. Here's an urgent message to all registered nurses. This is a chance for you to be a vital service to your country and to yourself. The Army Nurse Corps has opportunities for you. You'll become a commissioned officer with good pay and allowances with excellent chances to further your career. You'll have the benefit of working with the finest medical equipment in the world. You'll learn the newest professional techniques in anesthesia, operating room procedure, nursing administration, and many, many others. So get all the facts today. You can do this by writing or wiring the Surgeon General, United States Army, Washington 25, D.C. I'll repeat that address. The Surgeon General, United States Army, Washington 25, D.C. Do it now. <laughs> This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station by the United States Army and the United States Air Force Recruiting Service. Proudly We Hail stars Conrad Nagel. In the Dead of Night was written by DeWitt Cup. This program was produced under the supervision of Charles and Rogers Productions and directed by Charles Wilkes. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking, and here again is your host and star, Conrad Nagel. Well, friends... We hope you'll be with us again over this same station for Proudly We Hail next week. When we bring you a story entitled Terror at Polgar, a tale of terror and frightened people. It's a story you won't soon forget. So until then, goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>